Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness and today we're talking about energy system and zones. So a lot of people are using metabolic zones in their training um, and they'd use zones as a percentage of either perceived exertion, top heart rate, or perceived like power output. So functional power, right? You'll test that like with training peaks and then it'll assign you zones off of that power. But really what is a zone? Well, a zone is really an energy system that you're in. So when you're working out, you can either use sugars or fats, and you can see that on this board right over here. There's an intensity line, which is defined by work, right? So a work could be anything from a, like a cadence or the pressure on the pedal, the wattage. It could be speed on a treadmill. It could be incline, right? It could be load. It could be a weighted vest. It doesn't matter. Work is work. But as the intensity goes up by either increasing speed or load, Right? What we see is more use of fat, or excuse me, more use of sugar and, and less use of fat. And the percentages of the systems that you're using dictates what zone you're in. So if you're in a higher intensity range of work, you're typically working out in more of a sugar burning system. Now the body will develop and get better at the systems that you train in. So oftentimes we spend a lot of times working out in energy systems that are anaerobic, and we develop an uh, improvement in anaerobic metabolic efficiency, but then we don't get good at using aerobic energy systems. Now, why is that important if you're an anaerobic athlete? Because let's say you're up at that zone three, four when you're climbing hills and chasing things. Well, you still need to recover between the work. And the recovery accounts for the vast majority of the metabolic expression, and that's in an aerobic energy system. So we need to condition both systems in order to have, again, a healthy metabolism the ability to recover from work, and ultimately the ability to support certain amounts of workload for longer periods of time. And that, my friends, is what is going to define your workloads and your energy systems through your zones. Not perceived exertion, not percentage of work, but actually the energy system that you're using by way of this expression. And you can see this as we capture the gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide. The ratio of those two systems tells us which energy system you're in, and we can monitor that against your heart rate and the workload. Now you have volume, you have workload, and you have biofeedback. Okay? That's what's necessary in order to be able to establish an appropriate training system. So guys, if you have questions on this, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Remember, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time.